Hey, what's going on, y'all? Man, it's Black De Niro coming straight out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Philly's most underrated. And I am the film writer, the screenplay writer, the producer, director, and the lead and actor in Brush the Movie. Right, right. Like, like I was telling you before, man, I, I enjoyed that film. Brush is good. Um, I didn't tell you this, though. Brush reminded me reminded me of some of the classics that we grew up watching. Um, uh, the two that came to mind when I first saw it was... Uh, uh, Jason's lyric and uh, and uh, poetic justice, man. I don't know what you were inspired by when you decided to write that. You are a writer, right? You said you was a writer, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a writer. Yeah, I don't know what inspired you, man, but I, I kind of put it up there with those films, um, the way it was done, which is uh, why I think you get a lot of positive feedback for your films, man, because you kind of relate to a lot of the classics that we don't get no more. We don't, we don't, we don't get those those movies no more. And for you, you know, to still be um, in the field of making films and kind of, you know pull on those strings man it it, it 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 gets a lot of attention in my opinion for that reason the acting is good like i said the script when you, the way you wrote it was good but but um let me ask you a few questions about um how you got started in filmmaking in general man how how they come about um being a rap artist first of course um you know i was rapping for 20 plus years now and um uh i was just i was just always just always writing, rapping, and finding creative ways to um, to make people discover me that wasn't, you know, familiar with me already. Or right. people that didn't know about Black De Niro, um, I wanted to find a way to to always uh, gain more notoriety, more fans. So you know, when you're underground, you don't have the luxury of when you release a project. Um, billboards and commercials on television and radio all the time. Right. So my strategy was I used to grab a lot of people um, from Philadelphia, like all local artists, and I would just put them on certain uh, DVDs. I would always do a visual. So I would right. grab the Reed Dollars, the Beanie Seagulls, the Joey Jahaz, the Young Chris, you know, Gilly the Kids, Freeways, Petey That's Crack, right. Meek Mills, and I would put them all on um CDs or DVDs, and then put my music in inside. Oh, no. So, um, what is more to the story? I had about a, a 20, 20, I had about, I recorded about 50 songs, 50 records for this more to the story. And I was going to put about 18 of them on the disc. And I did the same thing with that. I did a, you know, a DVD with it. But the last song that I wrote was that song that you, we were talking about previously earlier about the, the song, the short film turning into a video. Right. right. And um, I didn't have intentions of sitting down writing a movie. That's, that wasn't my intentions. I just wanted to make a long, I wanted to act. I said, let me act this out first. Yeah. Act the song out. It's actually, when you listen to the song at the end, it's the exact, everything was going on from the beginning to the end. Yep. And when I put it out, it just, it caught. So it was something that I was unintentionally, I figured I was going to do good views, and then, but I didn't know I was going to do like that. It was the first time I went viral, first time I reached a million views um, by myself. Um, then it shot to 11 million views, and then it just, you know, kept growing. So from there, somebody just uh, said, you know, you need to start writing movies. And then I wrote, I sat down and I wrote Brush, which was, was um, inspired off of my, my real life. Yeah, man. I, I think it's at uh, 11.5 right now, man. I think it's at 11.5 right now. And, and just for those listening who don't know, um, it's more to the story was your first film, correct? Yeah, that was the first one that I did. And you had a music video. Yeah, yeah, unintentionally. Yeah, and you, and you had a music video um, following the actual film. Um, let, me, let me ask you this. Um, what, what inspired you to do it that way? Because I'm going to tell you something. Like I said, I've been following you for a long time, man, and, and that right there, that's that. That was a curveball. That was a um, unique strategy that I had never seen before. Like, who inspired that? Or where did you it, get that? It wasn't from? solely. It wasn't solely my idea. I was working with um the guy who filmed it. Um, this kid named High Dep. High Definition. Okay. He's working with Michael Blackston now. He, you know, he worked with. He shot Brush. He filmed Brush. Okay. He was in Brush for a second, but um, I was going to do a long video, and you know the way I was trying to construct it, and he was just like, "How about we just." You know, you act it out in the beginning and then I'll turn it into a video. So okay. he had, you know, he took 50 50 percent credit for that also. Okay. Um, and then once we did it, 
we just put it out, man. I started getting phone calls from people. Yeah, like, man. Yeah, that was that was, to me that was unheard of. And um, for you to collaborate and, and do something like that with a film and a music video again, we we often watch good uh, films or whatnot, and um, and then you know see soundtrack hear soundtracks rather after the fact. Or maybe watch a video that refers to a movie, but to have it so much, you know, relate so much and follow right after the fact. I thought that was a good marketing strategy, and that's kind of um, what my background is on, on the side, man. I like to do marketing, man. So coming from that standpoint at an early age to see that, like I said, that was um, I thought that was groundbreaking, even though somebody may have done it before. It was my first time witnessing, and um, and looking at it now, I have a newfound respect for it, man. I hope it inspires other people that's trying to, you know, what I'm saying, guerrilla market and, and do some things that's never been done and catch people's attention. And I think even to this day, you know what I'm saying, not too many people doing this. So I think it's still giving you some leverage in the game right now when you continue to make your project. So I just wanted that to be known because a lot of people don't understand that you you, you hitting hard at both ends, you know what I'm saying, with the movies right. and, um, and the um, film. But what got you started rapping, though, man? Because like I said, I, I got you because of the film, but, you know, you was an artist first. And what, what, what made you start rapping? And how long ago was that? Um, I still rap. I just don't chase it as much like it, like I, you know, I did with the films. Um, being as though I, I, you know, I got a nice name in the game. I know a lot of DJs from all over the city, all over the country, different states that I can always be one record away from. Yeah, making that record. But I'm just solely focused on film right now. Only time I do music is if I write something for the soundtrack or write a particular song to go inside of my movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I rather just do it myself. But um, rapping go back always since I was a child. Like I've been rapping off and on since I was around 10 years old. Wow. And, you know, I, that's what I wanted to be at first. Right. I mean, towards the end, I always wanted to be a rapper. So I was rapping for years and years and then, you know, going through life, ups and downs through life, um, going through, uh, Come, I come up in the eighties. So, you know, I came through the crack epidemic and, right. you know, my family got caught up on drugs and I went through shelter, and group homes and foster care. So I never had a chance to really go straight chase it. I was always doing that. And then by the time I got out of foster care, I was 14, 15. Then I got caught up in the street life and hustling and you know what that do for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been it takes all your focus. And um, I, I was rapping, but I just wasn't taking it serious. Okay. But I was able to battle people like the way we battle in Philly, not how they do like on URL and stuff right. like just whoever got the best raps. And I would just do that and do that. And my name started buzzing. And I made a CD called uh, Word on the Streets, I'm Hot. It was just from there, it, everything just escalated. I ended up on radio here in Philly, different stations, all times of the day. Um, still running around battling people. Then the collaboration started coming, like I said, with the freeways and Gilly the Kids and Beanie Siegel and anybody, almost every artist in Philly uh, from that time on. And then it just led me to my hidden blessing, which was being able to write. That's dope, know, man. Yeah, I just saw. Um, I just, I just, uh, I heard the um, the new track that you had on the um, soundtrack for Brush with, uh, I think it was Freeway and Young Chris, man, and that that just kind of put me back in the same mode I was when I heard it's more to the to the story, man. I thought that was a dope track, and um, I just recently um, started um, as a webmaster for Good Hood Films. I just recently started bringing light to uh, the soundtracks of the films that get featured on the website. And um, mm -hmm. because a lot of the songs that people do and put in their films, they either done themselves or they have a good friend that have done them. And they're independent as well, just looking at it from a music standpoint instead of right. a film standpoint. So I just started to bring light to that. And um, and a lot of stuff that I've seen in the past with you and most recently is part of the inspiration behind that. Because I want to I want to highlight, you know, these, these black films out here. But at the same time, man, these artists that are supporting these filmmakers that put their music in the film that you hear when you watch it, I think they need to get some attention as well. And so I just started adding that. And I'm definitely going to add, you know, some of your views. That goes without saying, but I just wanted to throw that in there. Like, how'd you find the actors uh, for the film Brush, man? Because I know you got uh, Freeway and a few other people in there. But but as well, far I as... Did, um, once I did as more to the story and it hit like that, I just started off doing as more to the story with just, just friends. Everybody was just homies. That's dope. Um. Cousin E was in there. He the one who got his hand shot in state property. Okay. 
that's the one who came. You saw State Property, and Beans was like, "What hand you roll up with?" Right, 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 right. Shot him in the hand. That's the guy who came, pulled up, and called me, and was like, "Hey, open the door. I got something to tell you." That's cousin E. And I called Spank the comedian, uh, Kevin Hart, close friend. Right. And and everybody else was just like girls from around the way, or girls that I knew, homeboys that I come up with. So by the time I did brush, everybody had already saw. It's more to the story yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was out for like two years. Brush came right behind it. So people, it was already, it's more to the story. It had to be at about three, four million views at that time. So everybody saw it, you okay. know, Philly small. Okay. So it was easy for me to say, you know, what's up, Free? You want to partner this right, Like, right, yeah, right. Chris, you want to do it? Yeah, Neef, you want to do it? Cassidy, what's up? And Cassidy just, it doesn't matter what I ask Cass to do. He know I'm going to do something productive, and he know I'm not going to waste his time. So anything I call Cass for, he did it. So no, the hustle, I already knew man. he was going to be Yeah, I already knew he was going to be involved with it. Yeah, that, that was dope, man. I, the, the brother in Brush, man, your brother, man, that dude, he, he came across like he had a lot of uh, experience on film, man. It's a lot of cats in there that was really, really good, which is why I asked you how you found him. But for all those to be- well, That's my real brother. That's my blood brother. Word. He don't have no- yeah, he don't have no experience. I didn't what? have any experience. Wow. <clears throat> wow. Just, Yo, I'm telling you, man. man. Honestly, you know, my family, man, we are really like, if you would compare my family to a family, it would be like the Waynes. Yeah, yeah. Real rap. Like, everybody's talented. My, That's dope. My bro- both my brothers, that was my other brother in it that was um in Brush, the one that was on the opposite team, okay. the one that was that gripped me up in the store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're it's talking about- me, then it's- then it's him, the one that had the shot going on him. Here the shot, he got up. Right. That's my brother, and the other one that so really my my brother. So we just naturally know how to. All three of us know how to rap. All three of us know how to flip. All three of us know how to fight. All three of us know how to cut hair. All three of us know how to act naturally. We never went to school or anything. We just it's just blessed with that talent, man. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. Nah, that 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 was good. What what um. What 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 led you to do that type of film though? Um, again, you uh, even uh, it's more to the story. And then the one, like I said, I saw the trailer for Jenny um, that I'm hoping everybody goes and watching and, and, and anticipate coming out because I know I am. They got a, a a certain feel to them, man. It's like you versatile with it, but at the same time, you you pull those strings that connect with the urban community, man, and bring us back to that same space. Like I said, um, when we used to watch those other films, like Brothers and stuff like that, those classic films we grew up watching. I want to ask you about some of your favorites and, and, you know, people that inspired you and films that inspired you because they're so relevant to what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which I think is why you got such a fan base. But give me some idea about how, what's your inspiration behind your writing? Well, Brush was really actually, it's more to the story, it was made up off of the song, like I said. Came from the song. So I, I made the song, and that was easy for me to have that because it's basically the song. Yeah, it matched. That's right. That's right. Brush, I didn't even know still that I can write a film yet. Wow. You know, I had a homeboy named D Black that was like, um, you know, we got a situation, we can get this situation at Netflix. And I was like, man, I don't write movies, though. He was like, you do now. So then I sat down and I tried to write brush. The first thing that came to mind was my life, you know, because I am from the street. So that's how to answer that question on how I connect with the urban people, our urban people and our underground folks is because I am still, that's right. I'm, I'm tuned in. That's right. I'm, I'm always going to be, it's always going to be in me. That's right. Not being in the streets no more, but the streets are always being in me. That's right. So being from the streets and then what I do to captivate other cultures is being from the streets I'm always going to have that street dynamic placed in there, but I'm not going to talk slang. I'm going to talk regular language That's right. so that everybody can relate. I'm going to have a storyline so that way everybody can relate. So it won't just be like just aiming for our people and, you know, oh, somebody, somebody, uh, we got different uh, races, some Caucasian people or some Spanish people that don't understand our slang. That's right. They'll get it because I'm just saying regular stuff. And, and or, you know, they won't just see me waking up with two chicks in the bed and shooting for no reason. And every, it's always about drugs. So it captivates every culture. Yeah, you did that, man. You did that but what right. I did was I just wrote about my life. Like me, when I quit the game, um, when I quit hustling, I, I did a cold turkey. For the sake of my children, so I can then have to raise my children from jail, wow. or either be dead. Right. And 
after hearing stories about me, so I quit, which is a very hard thing to do when you're making the type of money I was making. Right. Um, and, you know, it, it becomes an addiction. So I quit. So that's what I wrote about. And I was chasing music heavily at that point. So I didn't want to put, I was chasing movie music because then it seemed like it was like a get rich or die trying. So for some reason, God bless me to say I'm going to be an artist. I have no idea where that came from. I don't know what made me think of that. I just That's why I just say God gave it to me. That's what I was meant to do. He made me be an artist in there. Um, and I was going to call it, it's always a way out. Because if you notice at the end of the movie, I say, it's always a way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a friend of mine in the studio, his dad was in there one day. And when I was telling him about it, he was just like, that's too long of a... Um, a, a, a title, won't you just call it something like Brush? And I was like, nah, I ain't, I ain't calling that Brush over oh, here. You know what I mean? That was a good call. And I went man. home and I was chilling and I was just <laughs> laying down and it hit me and I was like, I called my man Shell, like, hey, Shell, tell your dad he just named the movie. Yeah, yeah, that was a good and then call. I just wrote it. And like I said, it was people around that was all those guys, that tattoo stop spot and all that stuff that's, uh, that's in my movie Backfire. That was my studio that I had. Look at him, so man. We did, <laughs> you brought up Backfire. I want, I want to get into that, too. You brought up Backfire. I told you I had some yeah. questions for you, but go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. We did everything in brush as far as um, my homies. They, they sat around. They watched me do it, too. They didn't even understand what I was. I was like, I'm going to do a movie. So they, they believed in me, but they didn't. You know, you never really, people don't really execute things like that when they say they're going to do it. Right. So next thing you know, I was filming. We had a casting call. Got some more people involved, like my man Charvez, who played Rue. He came through, and I always I got a visionary eye, and he he had a, a close sh- coat, like close to the face type shadow, okay. and he had like hair, his hair, but it was like up some. So I said, "Listen, can you grow your beard out?" So I had him grow his beard out. And he came on set one day. I just took his ponytail out of dreads. I pulled him down. I put him all in front of his face. I was, I was styling him like I was a beautician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, had all the, I had all his dreads in front of his face, and I said, that's how I want you. I want them to see your eyes coming through your braids, your dreads. And, and he executed his role. So basically me just leaving the game, trying to – when you leave the game, you got things like this. People think you turn soft. They think you're a bitch now. Uh, people think you're lying. You still got the drugs. Me and my brother, the way that we argued like that on that scene, yeah, that yeah. really happened in real life. That was real because I was the one that had to, you know, supply him. And once I quit, he was upset about that. Like, what am I going to do? And I told him to figure it out, just like when we was on the basketball right, court. Right. And I'm like, I don't know how you going to eat, but I know how I'm going to eat. So that's how all of it was basically real except the end uh, except the non-fiction stuff that you place in i mean the fictional stuff that you put in there towards the end and stuff like that but it was just based off my life man of me leaving something to do something positive leaving something negative to do something positive and making a way out in amongst the all the bullshit that we go through in the hood and live through that's crazy man that's crazy and, and now now i understand why why it was so um that's those scenes rather you know what I'm saying? It was so intense because I didn't even know that was your brother before I spoke to you, man. So, you know, yeah. that's that's crazy. But that was a recall of a real life situation, man, which which makes sense on why it was so genuine. And we competitive. Yeah, yeah. You watch the bloopers, right? Yeah. You see you see the bloopers when we when I when I said I got him, we smile. Because it's like now we're trying to see who's not gonna laugh. Who's gonna start taking this serious? Can you out act me in this scene? It's just me and you. And that's how we we just competitive. And it comes off on screen, right? Because that really happened. So that was that. Was that. We really argue like that all the time in real life, me and that nigga. And it's just authentic. And, and I write his character to be him because he's a hothead. That's how he is for real. So I'm not taking him out of his element. That's who he is. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, That's crazy, man. Cause it came, like I said, I thought he had done some acting before, but that came from a genuine space. So nah. that, that compensates for it, and it makes sense, man. But, but like I said, you had a lot of good actors in there, but that scene which you nobody, got... No, was, nobody was an actor in that in Brush. That's crazy, man. That, that, but nobody was an actor. Everybody was just inspiring actors. Raw talent. Everybody, I mean, some people wanted to do it, like um, uh, Charvez is doing little plays and stuff, and he, he wanted to do it. But everybody else was just 
the girl, I saw her. I knew her from a friend of mine. You, you saw us more to the story. So the bartender, and it's more to the story. And then I called her at the end to set up the guy spank. But we spanked right, him. right, right. Um, I, I know you talking about. She, her girlfriend was Ty, which was my the leading lady in Brush, but she followed me on Instagram when I posted up the bartender, and she was liking my pictures all the time. And I said, "You see your girlfriend? She killing it. I'm gonna put you in my next movie." And she was like, oh, "Okay." Well, she thought I was playing, but she never did any acting before. Wow. And wow, you know, she's just a regular girl, just cute. And I had hit her one day, you know, in the DM and said, hey, we exchanged numbers. I said, listen, I work fast and I'm not a procrastinator. And I don't play. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do another film. I want you to be the lead lady. She's like, all right. Uh. And I called her about six months later and said, you ready? She's like, ready for what? Like, ready to be in the film show? I don't know. I can't do that. I mean, like, she like, maybe I should take some acting classes or something. I said, well, I don't got no time for all of that. So she tried to back out. So I asked her to come down one day and um, have lunch with me to talk about it. Okay. But it was actually the day of the casting call. <laughs> we went out, we had lunch, and then I walked her into the room. That and it was, the cat, it was my whole team sitting there. Tiffany Barrett, the girl who helped me write the screenplay uh, or type it out for me and add some great ideas to it. High depth. The kid who found, I don't want to get a movie away, but the kid that found, gotcha. Um, what you call? He the one who filmed okay. the movie. He was okay. there. D Black, the one who made me to do okay. it, and myself. So she, I walked her into the room, and I gave her the paper. I actually got a picture of it on my Instagram somewhere, and I said, "It's your time to audition." And she was like, right on the spot. She was like, "Yeah," and she did it, but she was nervous, right? Makes sense. So when she did it, a lot of people was like. She's not going to carry it because she she just looks like she's too scared and shy. I said, that's what I'm looking for. Tell me. So with the way she was acting Personality. was the way that I wanted her to. I knew she wasn't going to try to do. Sometimes when people try, they look like they're trying. Exactly. So she was just being her. I gave her her real name. So she wouldn't be, you know, she calling somebody Erica, Erica, Erica. They might, oh, but if you say your name, black, it's automatic. So when I call her name, she'll automatically, and she learned her lines, and boom. So nobody in that film besides Chavez was an actor. Everybody was my family or That's crazy, just man. from around the way. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that, and you, that was a perfect setup, too, man. Strategic. I like how you explain that. That was that was strategic, man. That, but that just speaks volumes for, for why you were able, you know what I'm saying, to implement the things that you have to have the um, films come out the way that they have, man. So... But but going back to uh, uh, you mentioned Netflix earlier, so so mm-hmm. we all we talked about it's more to the story, and I'm thankful for that information because as long as that movie has been out, as much as I liked it, I did not know a lot of that stuff. So I'm looking at it from a different perspective now, and I hope that that not, not only clarifies some things for people, but motivates them to go watch it. Same thing with uh with Brush Man, because I had no idea that you had family in there at all. I'm looking at all the characters like, oh, they do. Oh, they might be people from around the way, but they got, you know, they done did this film and that film. I just ain't heard about it yet, but this is raw talent. So it's talented yeah, that's people, what I'm man. saying, man. So you, you, you giving me another perspective on the film, but like I said, I hope that that information motivates people to go watch both of them, but going back to backfire. Cause people, it's a lot of people, believe it or not, man, I'm telling you, it's a lot of people, who follow you to a certain extent or follow you all the way around. But my fans who don't even know about the films that you got going on, let them know about Backfire. And I'm going to say this before you even get started. Backfire did some numbers, man. And Backfire is your first film on Netflix? First film on Netflix. Crazy, crazy. So so how did that come about, man? How, how did that come about and where is it now? After Brush, I caught the DVD era in Brush. And Brush was the first thing that ever project I ever had out of all my rap career, anything that's ever been bootlegged to crazy extent that it yeah, was bootlegged. Man. Yeah. Um, and then Brush, I had caught the DVD era, so I made about fifty to sixty thousand dollars in one month, not sleeping, selling copies of Brush. Oh, you're so crazy. once I got a taste of that, I figured, let me sit down and write something else, and then backfire. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to do the same thing. I was basically looking at the money. 
like, oh, this is, oh, I can make this much money off right. this. Okay, so I'm going to write another one because they're tuned right. in and I'm going to press these DVDs up and boom. So um, I actually uh, didn't know what I wanted to do. Backfire was called The Wrong Guy. So I said, I told my brother, I said, man, I'm going to write a movie where I'm just kicking some ass. I'm going to beat people up. <laughs> I'm going to be this, that, be the wrong guy. I'm going to rob somebody, but I'm going to be the wrong guy to fuck with. And I actually uh, had a stunt guy come teach me a couple stunts, teach me how to do fight choreography, but it didn't end up that way. That's the way I wanted it to start, and it didn't pan out that way. So um, I started writing it, and I knew I was going to be on the run from the mob. Um the guy Dave, I called Dave Patton. Him and I used to both work with Meek Mills doing the rapping parts. Okay. Like 10 years prior, before Backfire, before I was doing film, we was doing music. Okay. He was working with Meek. I was always working with Meek. And I was like, yo, you know, one day, man, you're going to work. Dave Patton is the white kid who played OT okay. in okay. Backfire. And um, fast forward 10 years after I wrote backfire i called him they were still called the wrong guy and i was like hey man you know what's up i found him looked him up he was in california and i was like i got a movie i want to do and i had a certain amount of money and he said it wasn't gonna be enough that was just gonna cover his fee i was like all right cool well i'll get it done man i was like i'm just gonna send you my script just in case you check it out man and maybe we're working the future he called me back the next morning and after he read the script, he was like, you wrote this? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, anybody help you? I'm like, no. He said, you ain't right with nobody? I'm like, no. He's like, shit, I got a proposition for you. i shoot the film. <laughs> Just make me 50-50 partners. Yeah. And I said, let's go. And um, he's played OT because it's a rapper here in Philadelphia who's climbing the ranks tremendously okay. right now. His name OT. He a white boy okay. from Boston, but he's from okay. Philly. You know okay. how that yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've been here at McGraw's Park, and he's working with Benny the Butcher right now. He's with K Slay all the time. He's on that big, long K Slay okay. record. He won my first talent show that I did, my showcase. Okay. And he, he won a spot in the movie. Okay. But he, he was so much doing what he was doing, he couldn't get gotcha. focused on the character. And when people, you know, when I'm doing something and I need it done and you can't focus, I don't care. Because it was a, the lead lady in Backfire switch two, three times. And then he couldn't do it, so I got Dave to do it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got to keep it moving. Okay. And um, we wrote it. I wrote it. Um, that's my daughter, the little girl. Wow. There, the little girl, Maya. Jam. That's my that's daughter. Um, that was her first time ever doing anything. She was actually helping a girl that was going to be the lead try to get her act together. She was coming home from school. She was nine years old. And I said, hey, can you help me help this girl rehearse? And she said, yeah, because Kaya was really going to be a 16 year old. Okay. It was going to be my older daughter. Okay. And um, when he, she was rehearsing, she learned her lines like that. I gave her the paper. She just learned them. I'm like, yo, come on. What you doing? You got to be ready. She's like, I already know. Wow. She was flipping, doing cartwheels. And she came over. And every time I sent our audition tape to Dave, he would say, oh, man, she's not getting it. Talking about the leading lady. She's not hitting it. She's not hitting it. He's like, but who's the little girl? Right. I'm like, why? You want to use her? I didn't want to tell him it was my daughter right. to try to persuade him. He's like, yeah, if we can, she, she's great. I said, well, I thought Kaya was going to be 16. He was like, nah, let, let's make her a little girl to be more impactful. Right. So um, I asked her, I was like, you want to do this role? She was like, you going to pay me? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll pay you. <laughs> that. that's dope. And that's what that's happened. And so that's my daughter. That's my brother again, the one who was working at OG right. Blood Spot, the one who opened that's the right. door, who got shot gotcha. in the head. And then, of course, my brother again played Jerome. Um, that was all my family at the surprise party. All my kids, nieces, wow. nephews, everybody in their room was wow. family. Um, big moms, everything. Um, That's love. And every and then from there, who else we had in there in Backfire? And, and the rest, I just threw a casting call, and so many Italian people came out. It was ridiculous. I had enough to choose wow. from. Um, I, I formed personal relationships with a few of them. Um, and then from there, man, we just, we did it. We wrote it, it shot it, we shot it in 10 days, got it done. Dave said the agency wanted to switch the name to Backfire. We switched it to that. And then, um, 
we put it on Prime, Xfinity, On Demand, and like 13 different sites for a year. And then Netflix turned us down on the first go round, and then they picked it up a second. Wow. Day. Wow. And then once it hit Netflix, as it, it, soon as it hit, it yeah. trended. It was yeah, trending no. a week, and it trended it like four months straight. Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, no, I appreciate you, Shane. And didn't you have, didn't you get some, um, uh, didn't one of the comedians give you some feedback online about that? I came across a, a yeah, yeah, a video. Uh, Gary, Gary Owens. Owens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, and that's, I'm, I'm a big fan of Gary Owens. Um, um, somebody is, um, somebody, uh, a fan from somewhere else. He was like, hey, man, he wrote me on the gram one day. He's like, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. I'm a fan now. I became a fan by, Gary Owens, he was he was he was trying to talk crazy, talk down on your movie, but I actually liked it, and that shows you that all um, promotion is that's good right because he showed he yeah. showed love too, but he was he did it in his own weird comedic yeah yeah he, his, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 but but yeah. that was showing so love was like, to bring um, it up. You, you gotta know yeah, Gary yeah, Owens true. yeah you right so a lot of people was getting mad at him and nah, I'm like nah, nah that's Gary that's Owens right. that's like somebody else that's this is not the average guy sitting that's on right the couch going that's up. right that was his way so, of giving um, you respect. You know what I'm saying? That attention, yeah. Right. So he had uh so I told the guy, I said, No, nah, he's not talking about me. He talking about um that T I movie that was out at the time. I'm like, he was talking about that movie because he tore that movie right, down. Right, right, right. He was like, No, nah. he was like, he was talking about you. He got a podcast. So when I went and checked it out, I saw it, but I'm laughing hysterically as I'm watching it. So I went into his I found his Instagram. I went into his DM and I said, I didn't think he was going to respond because he you know he millions of followers and i just hit him and i said i'm the guy that that made that best first movie that you ever saw (laughs) i said i'm the writer and i'm the lead actor and i did it myself i said i I paid for it i put it out i directed it and then he wrote me back and said dag i got much respect for you for now for that because i know how hard it is to do that and get on netflix i said cool cool i'm a big fan of you too i said one day you're gonna be working for me I'm actually writing a movie now with a with a with a spot for him in it that he don't even know Yo, yet. That's that's dope, man. So I'm like, um, that's dope. I said you're gonna be working for me one day, and then you fast forward a couple years later, Clubhouse come out, <laughs> and I'm on Clubhouse and I'm in the room with Lou Williams and uh, Spank the comedian. We all talking, me Lou talking. So Lou, Lou is already talking about the movies. He's introducing me to okay. people, and you know Lou Williams and me. He's a good guy, man. He's like, he don't act like a lot of these NBA okay. players. He's okay. just, you know what I'm saying? Especially if he rock with okay. you. So me, him, Spank Comedian, we in there laughing, joking. Guess who comes into the room? <laughs> so somebody said, hey, Gary in here, pull him up. So he pull him up. Gary come right next to me. I'm all the way up top with everybody. I said, yeah, pull him up. So he come out. I said, hey, what's up, Gary? He said, uh, what's up? Uh, who's this? I said, it's Black De Niro. He said, uh, I still don't know who that is. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's the guy who wrote the best worst movie that you ever saw. He said, oh, because now it's like, oh. You remind me, yeah. You were here with Lou and Spank. And I, okay, yeah. I said, yeah, what's yeah. up? And then we talked for a little bit. And then we ended up having a conversation. And from there, was, you know what I mean? Nah, he, he had good intentions, man. Like I said, uh, word back, negative words or not, man. I know that was his way of showing love too. And like you said, these guys got a large platform, so when they give attention like that on that level, and he said some positive yeah, stuff, it started too. trending again yeah. after that. The movie started trending, and I didn't know why, because it trended for like four months, and then after he talked about it, it trended for another three wow. months. Wow! And it's because he was went, giving, and it he that knew that was going to happen. Movie. That's what I'm trying to tell you. In case you did have some. Some negative outlook on him speaking on it the way that he did, man. He knew that them guys know what's going to happen when they bring attention to stuff on their social media. Yeah, I was shocked that he even saw it, man. When you sit back and be a fan of somebody for so many years, and then your work get looked at by somebody, you you forget sometimes that people just be regular people home watching the same things we're watching. Yeah. So for him to, you know, a lot of people saw it, man. Vince Carter, Don That's Q, right. it was so many uh, um, uh, bizarre from from. Um, from uh, Eminem's group. I've seen a lot of people in Atlanta, man. I, anywhere I went, San Diego, San Francisco, um, St. Louis, I was spotted. It didn't matter where I was at in the malls and the airline pipe. People, everybody knew who yeah. I was from that movie. So it was kind of like, once you get a taste of that, then you 
You're like, okay. Well, I'm telling you, man. Just... I'm telling you, man. Your hustle from day one, bro. I, like I, before the movie even came out, before I even knew about the movie. And I'm not the only one. That's what I'm trying to tell you, man. You reach a lot of people just by your grind. They don't, they don't even necessarily see all the movies that you're putting out or hear all the tracks that you put out. But your grind speaks volumes, man. You got to understand that. You don't influence a lot of people, bro. I'm telling you. So that's why, just like you said, you being encouraged by hearing about these big name celebrities and artists, you know, watching your films. But that's why I want to throw those two cents in there about, you know what I'm saying, the, the work itself, not necessarily the project, but you grinding to manifest the projects is, is speaking another right. language. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, stay mm -hmm. encouraged about that. I, now, I want to ask you, I want to ask you, like, what kind of issues, you know what I'm saying? And all these projects that you've done, especially dealing with family more so than I knew before. What kind of issues did you did you come up with or come into that might have made life a little difficult for you in completing those projects? Every issue you it's an issue with every project. It's issues that people don't even understand. I'm frustrated. Um the, the only thing I never do is quit. The only thing I know I'm not gonna do is quit. I walked off set one time on brush. I just said, fuck it. I walked off. It was getting on my nerves. I just walked off. I, I see all tomorrow. Yeah, decompress. I get it. I just walked off set. I was mad as shit. But um, I just, listen, man, God bless me. Some people get blessed with certain things. Some people get blessed with talent and no ambition. You know, a lot of people that got that book written that don't put it out, four or five books. A lot of people that got that clothing line in their head but won't take the initiative to stitch one piece That's of right. fabric. Um, the people that uh, got music and in the studio and just go, but never put it out. I just been born a natural hustler, man. I, like everything, he blessed me with a drive, and I love it, and I thank him for it. He blessed me with a drive. He blessed me with ambition. Um, or, no matter what I was doing, if I was cutting hair, if I was flipping, if I was playing ball, I was always doing something. That's why when I was in the game, I was quote unquote good at it. I never was a broke drug dealer. I never was a half planner. I was I was not playing around. I was one of the top dogs. Because of that, it, I was I was taking my talent down the wrong road. But anything I put my mind to, it was it was that. So coming across a lot of things, man, it's like a lot of obstacles. It's, um, for instance, with a brush, like I said, I walked off set. A lot of people was playing around. That's why I stopped working with friends after that. Oh, okay, you know. This girl got to leave to go pick up her kid from daycare. This guy got to go bust a trap. He got to, he want to be late. You start learning the, 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 um, the meaning of time is money. Right. So you, those were the obstacles I had with brush, um, and discrepancies between the executive producer and myself and, and hot Depp at that moment. Um, that movie took about 18 months to come wow. out, um, with backfire. I couldn't get no one to film it before Dave Pat and I had a whole crew. And while I, since I'm the guy who has to be the, the casting at this point, I'm the project manager, the casting director, the casting put down the lead actor, the writer, the location scouter. I'm everything. I got 19 hats on. So when I was talking to these guys that was going to do the film, they didn't believe that I had to fund it because things kept coming up and I'm like, hold on, let me, I got y'all. Let me, tighten this up and then one day he called me and we respectfully um you know backed out of it when it got completed we ended up i ended up coming in contact with somebody that works for him and he said he regretted that that was one of his things that he passed up on because he didn't know me and he was white so you know you, you ask these people they looking at you as an average black guy just, and i understand them because a lot of people come to right. me want to do this want to do that want to do this you give them a shot they bullshit right. So he probably appeared that I was playing because he didn't right. know me. But um, he found out that I wasn't. Well, I'm always going to execute. Once I start, I'm yeah. executing. So um, I ran into so many things with that, man. The biggest thing we ran through um, with Backfire was like a, a location sometimes. Okay. Uh, it, everything kind of flew smooth, but it was just a lot of location problems and things of that nature yeah, but i had a lot of issues with jenny really too and before we get into that okay. that was so every project have issues man then i got my own personal things going right on. you know what i'm saying like family members passing away from cancer and you know kids i gotta attend to all right. the time my children right. just the outside life 
So it's always something that's going to, and that's why I tell people when I give them um, my advice that they want to rap, they want to do film or whatever, I just tell them, man, don't don't quit. That's it. That's all I can tell yeah. you. I rap through everything. I rap through a blood clot. I rap through a small stroke. Wow. I rap through Bell palsy. I rap through getting shot. I rap through my mom dying. Wow. I make films and rap through my aunt dying. These are people that was close to me and then. I just keep on moving. I don't stop. I went to jail three years, came home, kept moving. I never see stopped. what I'm saying, man. See, now you don't even understand, bro. Like, I, I'm, I got that in me. Like, I told I'm, I'm I hear you 100 percent, bro. 100 percent. But that gives it more. You don't understand. It hits harder when you say stuff like that right there. That I didn't know none of that. I'm like, look at this man right here. He want to do music. He's good at it. He's consistent with it. You know what I'm saying? He rubbing elbows with guys and he's still pressuring. You know what I'm saying? But then then I took it when I saw you doing the film and I was like, man, and like I said, a fan of doing films, which led me to create this platform. I was like, nah, nah, my brothers and sisters need need more light. You know what I'm saying? They need more shine. They they need more respect for their craft because this, this take work. And to hear you and to know you were doing both. And then to hear that that was all that stuff was going on in the midst of the projects that you're working because everybody knows you know day to day is going to happen but some of the stuff you right. just said man i would have never known that bro and like i said for you to be as consistent in spite of all of that and to do it at the level that you've been doing it like i said man that, that's just that's more motivation for me bro i'm serious i'm glad you disclosed that I'm, thank you for sharing that and i hope that somebody watching this and after seeing or even before seeing your other projects you know what I'm saying? They realize they ain't got no excuse. They ain't got no excuse. No. You know what I'm saying? You you just basically make made an example of, of that. Yeah, they ain't got no excuse. Um, Jenny, when is it coming out, man? Looking forward to it. Um, it's been it's been pushed now. Like um, uh, like I said, the biggest obstacle came across that was COVID. Okay, makes sense. Um, we never been through nothing like that before. Right. You know. So that was we had to go through that. That's when I was introduced to the world. Uh, the, the lockdowns, um, Thanks. the locations again. It's always something with the location. I had this issue with the leading ladies, okay. so the, the, they swapped out three times. Wow. Um, uh, what else was going on with that? It was just a lot, man. Stuff like that. But the only thing that that, I, that I'm sure of from doing these movies through experiences. Coming through the problems that I went through with, there's more to the story, brush, backfire. People always say trust your process, but they don't. I trust the process. Whatever happens, happens for a reason. Like when the very first, um, when the very first lead lady uh, got fired, when I fired her, uh, everybody was nervous because of it. And uh, to me, um, I wasn't worried because now I got the best lead lady the movie can have. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what happened. That's how that was supposed to go. If I would have kept her, I would have missed out on a tremendous, a tremendous actress that did a phenomenal job, better than 20 times, 20,000 times better than I believe she would have. So, and that's not talking down right, right. No, on the facts. I'm talking speaking facts. For me, from my eyesight, from what I right. envision, from what I wanted, you know, so so it don't come across as no type of, you know, disrespect or hate from my, when you write, you have to envision That's your right. characters. So to me, the way that I saw it, the best lead. Blessing in disguise, so, I get it. Yeah, so I don't, you know, I don't worry about the issues that I go through. When I go through them, I get frustrated a lot because I get frustrated fast anyway. Especially when I'm trying to do something, I get frustrated because I'm so driven and I be ready. I want everything to go right. So, other than that, I don't really worry about the obstacles. If it went through straight smooth, I don't think it would be there right. You there you go. Um, let me ask you this, man. What were you inspired by any particular producers, writers, or directors in the game before you started filming, or did you just, you know, yeah. were you okay? Speak on that. Of course, I get my name from Robert Absolutely. De Niro. It's my favorite actor. That's why I'm Black De Niro. Um, Quentin Tarantino has to be my favorite uh, filmmaker. Uh, Quentin, um, yeah, beast man. Of course, I'm I'm a fan of uh, a lot of the people, man, that everybody's fans of the Denzel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Morgan Freeman, um, 
Samuel L. Jackson, Matt Damon, uh, Brad Pitt. Yeah, 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 okay. Keep okay. With beast. Um, uh, what's his name? John Stapleton. Yeah, yeah, Like, uh, the guy from, uh, from, uh, Independent, uh, not Independent, the guy from, um, what's the name of the movie with Jamie Foxx? I just watched it the other day. That Jamie, that a lot of And they, they filmed it in Philly. They filmed it in Philly. Uh. Um... <laughs> you gonna beat yourself up by that? Right, it, 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 it was real good. It was it was fun. But the guy I'm talking about, man, he was in a lot of things. The white guy. He, okay. He's always he's dope. Okay. And, and the movie gonna come to me too because, um, I was just watching it. Uh, they killed his whole family, and Jamie Foxx was like the, the prosecutor. Oh, okay, I think so. I think so. And and, all, and the people got off, and then he. He went and killed them all. Oh, the white guy ended up killing. No, them. no, I'm thinking yeah. of something else. See, now you got me curious. Yeah, bro, it was filmed right here in Philadelphia, and I just watched it. Um, uh, the Law Abiding Citizen. Okay, okay, Law Abiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that Law Abiding yeah. Citizen. I saw that. Yeah, he's he's. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I didn't know that was out of Philly. I didn't know that was filmed in Philly though. That's good. Okay, I learned yeah. something. But it's 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 a lot. I'm I'm a fan of a lot of people, man. So many talented people out there, and I was already always a fan of. Um, you know, actors. So now that I see that I can do it and I can write, I just can't wait to get my just do That's right. to be. That's right. A part of the situation right. with these people. Man, look at here. You already part of the situation. You just don't know it, but that's that's the ambition talking. You know what I'm saying? So I respect that, but you don't even understand, bro. Like for you to be in Philadelphia as long as you have and reach as many people as long as you have from from your drive, man. Like. You already in there, but you know, to each his own. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to tell you, you, right. you done, you done made ground, bro. In the time you've been working, you done made ground. So let that continue to be your motivation. And um, and yeah, don't 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 look back, man. Don't look back. Keep moving, cause there's people watching. There's young people right now coming out of high school looking to pick up a camera. There's people that's coming out of high school younger. You know what I'm saying? Rapping, coming across your videos. You know, there's gonna be people watching this that. You know, enjoy watching film, want to learn something about filmmakers that's that's hearing the hustle and hearing what you accomplish and whatnot. It's going to be motivated to do stuff. Keep doing what you're doing. Your actions are speaking louder. Your actions are speaking louder. I'm telling you, people watching you, man, and and um, and they're looking at you and they're putting you in high regard. But I, matter of fact, that leads me to the next thing that, that I want to ask you before we uh, before we close up, man. What words of inspiration would you give a young person, an old person, black, white, whatever, Male or female, what words of inspiration would you give somebody that's looking to pick up a camera and start filming, you know, and, and doing something similar to what you've already done, man? Um, a couple of words. I have seminars called um, Get Started Now. Okay. I had a seminar called uh, Get Started Now seminar. And um, this basically is telling people how to get started, like how I was speaking previously about people who have them books is not publishing them or taking a step to do it. People that got the songs in studios, who's not putting it out. I mean, I don't care if you can make five CDs, right. just do them and put them out. Right. You know, the first time I made my CD, Word on the Streets, I'm Hot, I put five, six songs on it, had like 10 CDs, and then the whole neighborhood, I was just sitting on my block and it was just coming, coming, sure. coming. So you never know who's going to buy it. I feel like if you gain one fan, you good. Like I go to shows sometimes and the promoter be like, oh man, I'm, I'm my bad, man. I didn't know it was going to be like this. If my name didn't draw the people and his place didn't draw the people, and there's 13 people in there, guess what? I'm going to go crazy on them 13 right. people like if it was 13,000 right. people. Because if I can get those 13, if I can get two out of those 13 or the whole 13, they're just going to spread the word more. Never had advertisement for Backfire. Never. No posters, no billboards, no nothing. Wow. It was all word of mouth. Same thing with everything else. So, and Backfire wasn't on YouTube or none of that. So, it was all word of mouth. If you get people that like, that like you, they're going to spread it. They're going to fight the people against you. I'm pretty sure you come across people like, hey, man, he all right. You're like, no, he dope. And they're like, nah, nah, nah. But you're fighting for me. That's right. People fighting for me that I don't even know. And then one day that person might come across and say, yeah, he is all right. So the advice I would give him is you have to execute. That's right. You always got to execute. If you say you're going to do something and you start something, execute. Because you never, you, if you don't, you ain't going to have nobody like you because ain't nobody going to know how dope uh, you are. Because they don't, 
You ain't never do. And the other ones, I'm always, I always say the same thing. Don't, don't quit. If I'd have quit, I would. Oh, man, I done seen so many rap groups come and go. I bet. So many rap people come and go. So many people come home from jail, be so serious, want to get with me. And then two years later, they're not rapping no more. And people, they think it's sweet when they start getting into the game and find out the politics of it and realize it ain't going to happen overnight like some people. And just then the third, they quit. And when everybody quit, you just clearing the lane That's for it. me more. You uncluttering you uncluttering right. the lane for That's me. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, people always put expiration times on things, you know, especially our people got a problem with that. Our people have a problem with acting like growing old is a problem. You know, the first thing you're old nigga, old shit. I love it. I love being older. I love it. I love growing older. I love being older. I don't want my tombstone reading no little early notes. You know what I'm saying? So I want to see kids and grand. I see kids. I want to see grandkids and great grandkids and enjoy this life on this earth. So I don't, I never quit, man. As long as I can go, I'm going to go. And, you know, like I said, they put the expiration on you. This age trying to rap and you just, I'm not trying to do nothing. I'm doing it. And I'm going to do it until, unless you, uh, a name brand person, you know, Jay-Z can rap to 90. Nobody says nothing. Nas can rap. Nobody says nothing. But when you're still coming from a certain spot, that's what people want you to do. They want you to quit because uh-huh. they say, oh, you're this age doing it and you trying to do this and that. But that ain't never gonna stop. Nah, man. You know, I'm always gonna keep. Nah, going. man. Keep. I'm telling you, that that's inspiring. Regardless, man. Don't 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 listen to the words, man. Don't listen to the words, nah, man. You, you pushing, man. Cause like I said, your actions, your actions speaking louder right now. Won't quit entertainment. You can't came to mind when you were talking just now. You know what I'm saying? Won't so, quit. That's where I got my company from. Go. That's why. That's where it's called. Won't that's quit. Right. Uh, I had to look up a couple names before I can um, form the LLC. And it was gonna be don't stop, don't quit. A lot of those names were ticking, so but won't quit A and T. Yeah. And that and that that's they go from there. Like like I said, Jenny will be coming out soon. The sales agent just, just got it. So right. just gotta just gotta work it, man. Look here, man. I'm gonna tell you, like I tell everybody I speak to, but I'm I'm gonna understand this. I mean this too. Anytime you finish a project, bro, and you put it online, make sure that I know about it. You put it online, make sure I know about it, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to get promoted to the highest degree. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure people see it. You know what I'm saying? You taking the time to do this. You know, I'm thankful. I'm a fan, like I said. So if you communicate that you got a project out, I'm going to let people know, look, Black De Niro got a project out. Go watch it. This is where you can watch it. And and you know what I'm saying? And and like I said, and um, they hopefully will give some feedback on it so you can go back and look at it later and be like, oh, okay, there's some more people enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? My joint that I didn't know, you know, that actually saw it. So I, I want you to, you know, take from that. I want you to take from that, man. But you don't right. understand, bro. I'm I'm very appreciative right now, man. Like I said, I've been following you, but I've had questions. I've been watching your films. I've had questions. I've seen you doing your music thing. Like I said, I just saw the video with Freeway and Chris, and I know Cassie is one of your homies, and I got respect for him and all the other cats, man. Willie, really, I follow all them cats, man. And to know that you in the mix with them, um, you know what I'm saying? Just lets me know the caliber of dude you are, man. You know what I'm saying? And you just confirmed all that for my conversation. And like I said, I want I want people to be motivated to see your stuff, um, which is why I asked you to do this as well. So I want to thank you for your time, man. And um, anytime, like I said, you need me, or uh, never mind me, anytime you want me to promote anything that you got coming out, just let me know when it's on there, man. It's on there, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.